How many of you guys have gone to a dental office and um, let's say a dentist comes over and does a quick check, um, you know, in your mouth and then he calls out some weird numbers and, and letters that have that you have no idea. So, for example, he might say 380 uh, is a watch. He might say 24 buckle, you know, there's a MOD or 24 or 24 buckle, there's a caries or cavities, you know, and he'll use a uh, different term like 44L, you know, 44F, 44B. So there's so many different uh things that the dental professionals will say and it's important to be aware of what they actually mean. Now I know you guys know what 44 means because we looked at the FDI numbering system last uh, in the last video and so we know 44 stands for quad four tooth number four. So a supreme molar on the lower right. But what we're going to look at now is or are the surfaces of the teeth. So sometimes we'll look at, we'll say lingual. Sometimes you'll see me use the word facial. Sometimes you'll see me use the word occlusal. Sometimes you'll see me use the word mesial distal. So what do they all mean? Well, the first thing I want you to look at is this. Lingual are surfaces of the teeth that face the tongue. So if I were to turn this around, I you, I want you to imagine that there's a tongue right here at the bottom, right? We all have a tongue right here where our mandibular arcus, so it's near the tongue. Um, the tongue is right here, it's near the teeth. And all the surfaces over here that my mouse is pointing to are the lingual surfaces. 3-1 lingual, 4-1 lingual. Okay, so again, 3-1 lingual, 4-1 lingual. And at the top, 2 1 lingual, 1 1 lingual, and that's 2 6 lingual right there where my mouse is. 2 6 lingual. Here, so the surface that is pointing towards the tongue, whether it be in the bottom or, or the top, is considered lingual. Facial are the ones that faces the lip or the cheek, so the outside. So again, if I were to show you this using this 3D image, all this is considered facial. So 1-1 one, one facial, 1-2 one, facial, 1-3 one, facial, 1-4 one, facial, 1-5 one, facial, all the way to 1-8, turn this around, all the way to 1-8 facial. And the way we actually write this down is if we were to say facial, we could say, uh, like let's say if I wanted to do 1-4, one, 1-4 four, one, four F, F for facial. Or if I were to refer to the lingual, Instead of saying one for lingual, I might write it down as one for L, L for lingual. So it's a sh the first letter basically identifies, um, is the short way of saying lingual. First letter is the, first, is the short way of saying facial. Now, when you look at the facial, you could say, so you could actually say that all, oops, see what happened here. Okay, you could actually say that all of these are the facial, which yeah, all of these are the facial surfaces, but you could be more precise and you can say, well, and this is the 2-1 labial. 2-1 labial. So labial is the part that faces the lip. And then I could say, if I go back to that same diagram, I could say that this is the 2-6, what the surface right here, this, um, right here where my mouse is, 2-6 buckle. B, 2-6 B, 2-6 B for buckle. Buckle means cheek. So if you have, um, if you're pointing towards the outside, okay, of this and you're talking about the surface on the outside that is facing the lip, you could either say facial, so you could say, um, this is the one three, or, sorry, two three, two three facial, or you could say two three labial. And if you're looking at this one over here, which is, let's say, let's do 2-5, okay, this is 2-5. This, by the way, if you're looking at this numbering system, it's a universal numbering system, okay? Who well, is not the one we're gonna use um, in our clinic, we're gonna use the FDI numbering system. So if this is a 2-5, and I wanna talk about the surface on the outside facing the face, um, you know, facing the cheek, it would be called 2-5 buckle. So if I'm concerned about 2-5 buckle, I will say 2-5 buckle. So buckle is the area from the premolar to the molar that faces the cheek, if you want to be more precise. And then usually what we say here is for the anterior teeth, we might say 2-1 facial or 2-1 labial. 2-2 facial, 2-3 facial or 2-3 labial. Usually we use the term facial for the anterior teeth. And then for the posterior teeth, the back teeth, 
premolar to molar, we usually say buccal. We don't re really use the word facial. Now let's look at mesial and distal. So proximal, proximal means in between, okay? So proximal means in between. The areas that are in between the teeth are known as proximal, okay? Now, when we um, talk about teeth in numbers, we might you might hear, hear prof professionals, dental professionals say, one one mesial, one one distal, two one mesial, two one distal, and what does that mean? So what you gotta do is you gotta draw an imaginary line right here, and this is the middle, right? Which is known as the midline. And what I want you guys to do now is when you have well, imagine this midline, the surface that is closest, so if I divide the two in half, the surface that is closest to the midline, to the middle, is known as the mesial. So again, I cut this in half. The surface that is closest to the midline is known as your mesial. So here is the 2-1 mesial. And here is the 1-1 one, one mesial, this colored part. And the part that is not colored, the part that is um, away from the midline, is your distal. 2-1 distal. 1-1 one, one distal. So the, the non-colored one is the distal. So again, mesial is towards the midline, the area that's towards the midline. Distal is the area away from the midline. So let's look at 2-6 over here. We're going to look at 2-6. I'm going to cut the tooth in half, okay, and I'm going to color one side, okay? So is this area 2-6 mesial or is this area 2-6 distal? What do you think? 2-6 mesial or 2-6 distal? If you said mesial, you would be correct because that area is closest to the midline. The, the area that is not shaded is your distal, so that is further away. So this area where my mouse is, the uncolored area, is considered 2-6 distal. So basically what you do is you cut the tooth in half, and the area that's closest to the midline is known as your mesial. The area that's further away is known as your distal. And lastly, we have the occlusal. Occlusal are your biting surfaces or your chewing surfaces. So sometimes if you have a cavity right here, for example, then what we would say is 180. So we would write this as 180 O for occlusal. 180 has caries. Caries is a fancy way of saying cavity. Again, going back to this example, 26 mesial is this area that's colored and then the area that's not colored this area here because it's further away from the midline is 2 6 distal because that's further away now within each tooth you can divide it into three sections so i'm going to show you a diagram okay let's look at this and i'm going to zoom in here so we can see better so we know what the difference between mesial and distal Right, so mesial is the half, or not really the half, but the third that's uh, closest to the midline. Distal is the one that's further away from the midline. So imagine this is your central incisor, okay, and the midline is like right over here. So this one is your mesial side, this is your distal side, and right here is the middle. So you can see here we've divided the two into three. We can also divide the two into three. Um, horizontally. So we have the very tip of the tooth that's known as incisal. Think of incisors. All of these are your incisors. Here we have the central incisor. So the very tip is your incisal edge. Then we have the middle. So you can say incisal third, middle third, and then cervical. Cervical is the one right over here. This is your cervical third. And cervical is like right along the gum line. It's right along the gum line. So this you can't see the root. We can only see the enamel when we're looking at someone's mouth. So cervical is the one right over here that's very close to the root. Okay, that's cervical. And then even if you look at the root, you can also divide it into three. Cervical is the one closest to... Um, where the enamel and root meet. Then we have the middle, and then we have the apical. Apical, I, the way I think of it is the end of the root is called an apex, okay? It's called an apex. So apical and apex both have AP, so that's how I remember it, apex or apical. So apex is the very end of the root, and this third or this you know section we're looking at is known as your apical. Okay, so that's where the incisor is. And remember, lingual, if I had to rotate that tooth, the lingual is the inside of the tooth, the middle is, you know, the, so when I say, sorry, inside, what I'm referring to is the, the part that's facing the tongue, 
or near the tongue, the middle, and then we have the labial because that's the area that's facing the lips, labial for lips. If you look at a molar, instead of it being incisal at the very tip, it's occlusal. Okay, so occlusal is what we say at the very uh, top of the molar. Again, we have the middle, again, we have the cervical, and um, let's see if I can ink. Yeah, there we go. And when we're looking at this, where the root, we have the cervical, which is the one that's closest to this line. This is called the CEJ. We'll talk about what this means later on. But the area that's splitting the enamel and the root, the one, the area that's closest to that is known as your cervical. We have the middle, and then we have the apical. Okay. So when we're looking at line angles, you can see that in the tooth, there are so many different line angles. And you can see labio-incisal, mesolingual, mesolabial. What do they all mean? So first, we got to look at the tooth as a whole. And we got to figure out, okay, well, where is the facial or labial side? Labial because it's towards the lip or towards the face. And this is the labial side. That means the opposite is your lingual side, which is toward the tongue. And then we have differentiated the mesial and the distal. So mesial, this side is the mesial because it's closest to the midline. And you would know this better when you look at it in a, in a person's mouth. And then distal is the one further away. So labio incisal, all you do is you figure out the words that are used. So labio means facial towards the face. Incisal, incisal means the top. So this right here, this line, line angle, so this line, this so right here is your labio incisal, because this is your incisal side. How did I know this? Well, if you remember from this, the very tip is your incisal. So labio means the one outside, okay, the line that's um, outside, facing the outside of the mouth. And then incisal is that top of the incisor. Let's look at mesial lingual. So mesial is the one towards the midline. And lingual is, this is the line right here, the dotted line that's on the inside. So that line is your mesial lingual line angle. So we're basically looking at lines in a teeth. Um, let's look at distal labial. So distal means away from the midline. Labial means lip. So this is an area towards the lip, right? Towards the lip. And so that line is the distal labial. And distal lingual, the opposite, is the inside line. That's on this the opposite side. And you can also do the same thing for a molar. Because remember, with a molar, we see a lot more terms. But let's like look at some. So buccooclusal. Bucco means the outside, right? The one facing the cheek. Okay, the tooth that's facing the cheek. Occlusal, occlusal means the top. So this um, line right here, actually right here is your buccooclusal line angle. And this line right here that is running this way is your distal, because you can see it's distal, it's on the distal side. And you can see over here it is the distal occlusal line angle. So it's right here distal and it hits the occlusal it's at the top of the, of the um, occlusal surface so distal occlusal so when you're doing this you need to digest or understand the word break the word into half so distal means it's on the edge it's on away from the midline and lingual lingual means it's on the inside so this is your distal lingual line angle so just split the word in, into uh, understand what mesial means understand what occlusal means, put them together, and then you can identify the lines that are running through the teeth. And the same thing you can do for point angles. So point angles is when we have three terms meshed together. So if we're looking at the mesial, labial, incisal point angle, point refers to literally the tip, the point of the tooth. And so mesial, because it's on the mesial side, incisal, because it's right on the incisal edge, and then labial, because it's on the outside. So that point that's facing the outside is known as your mesial, labial, incisal point angle. And you can do the same thing for the posterior teeth. Now, what's interesting about um, incisor teeth and also molars is that they have lobes. So there's like different lobes. There's a lobe here, there's a lobe here, there's a lobe here, and they kind of mesh together. So when they're formed, it's basically a fusion of lobes. Lobes just mesh together. Same thing with molar teeth. You can see here there was five lobes initially that it started off with, and then they mesh together. So as they mesh together, what happens is you get grooves. So these lines that you see in between or in the teeth on the occlusal 
biting surface are grooves. Okay, so when the lobes fuse together, they form grooves. So let's look at some interesting terms that you will see throughout this course. So the first one is tubercle. Tubercle is basically a small elevation of enamel on the crown. So see this extra enamel that's on that tooth, that extra enamel, um, or that bump of enamel is known as a tubercle. Fossa is a depression, so something, uh, or a concavity. So think of like um, a depression, a dip within the teeth. So actually, sorry, this are, these are tubercles. You can see a tubercle is a bump on the, on the tooth. So there are bumps over here on the incisors, the central incisor at the back, there are bumps, and those bumps of extra enamel is called tubercle. So fossa, fossa is a depression. So if you look at a, um, one of the um, molar teeth here, and we'll look at how you can identify the molar teeth at a later uh, time, but that depression, that dip that you see, that tiny dip that you see is known as a fossa. A pit, a pit is basically like the very middle, the pinpoint hole uh, found um, in it in, in within the groove. Okay, so it's like a hole, and, and that pinpoint hole is known as a pit. That's usually where cavities start, like, you know, uh, you can see a lot of bacteria, food get in there, and then it creates a, uh, a cavity. A cusp is a mound on the crown, so the bump on the crown is a cusp. If you're looking at this example here, we see four cusps, one, two, three, four. There's four mounds on the crown. And a ridge, a ridge is basically a line that runs through. So. Here is a line, that's the mesial ridge. Here is another line, that's the distal ridge. Um, we, we call it the marginal ridge, which we'll talk about later. But again, um, ridges are like an elevated portion of a tooth that runs in a line. So this again is a ridge, a lingual ridge, because it's towards the lingual side. Um, this over here is a buccal ridge, because it's on the towards the buccal side, or towards the cheek side. Okay, so uh, this is the lingual groove or ridge, and this over here is the buccal ridge. Okay, the last um, one, the last thing you should know is, so we know what cusps are. Cusps are the bumps within a, um, a crown. So here we have one, two, two cusps in this, in this um, teeth this premolar. Now what I want you guys to know is the difference between a triangular ridge versus a transverse ridge. So triangular ridge is this purple line right here is known as a triangular ridge. Now I'm trying to understand why it's considered triangular because I just see a straight line but just I want you guys to know that this is considered a triangular line or a ridge sorry. So it's basically it runs from the very tip of the cusp all the way to the very center, the middle part of the occlusal surface. So tip to the middle, that is one triangular ridge. Here, tip to the bottom, so that purple line is another triangular ridge. And when you put them all together, okay, so we look from the cusp to cusp, that is known as a transverse ridge. So when the two triangular ridge um, you know, kind of cross like the occlusal surface and they meet. If you're looking at it all together as one, you're saying it's a, we say it's a transverse ridge. But if we're looking at it separately from cusp to the, sorry, from cusp <laughs> to the center, to the very middle part of the occlusal surface, that's a triangular ridge. And you can see it says lingual triangular because this side is near the tongue. And here it says buc buccal triangular ridge because this side is near the cheek.